I thought I had seen most of the historical graves of Sonora, California when I recently explored the Oddfellows Cemetery. Little did I know that the town has yet another very old cemetery, the Masonic Burial Grounds. Let's head there now. So welcome to this episode of History Hunters. I am back in Sonora, which is part of Tuolumne County. It's the county seat of Tuolumne County. And we're gonna check out the Masonic Cemetery. Earlier, I did the Oddfellow Cemetery on another hill over there. There are some longtime Sonora residents who have family members buried here. They include the Caulfields and the Appersons. Known as the Queen of the Southern Mines, Sonora was founded by Mexican miners who named this town after their original state in Mexico. By 1849, the hamlet boasted about 5,000 inhabitants. Although mining occurred in the area in 1848, the first documented discovery was in Woods Creek near today's Sonora High School on March 14, 1849. The lure of gold brought in people from Germany, France, England, Ireland, Italy, as well as those from Mexico and South America. The very few early photos of Sonora available show scattered buildings between hills. But when I located this early engraving of Sonora, my eyes were drawn from the small commercial district to an overlooking hill planted with a few gray plots, precisely the site of today's Masonic Cemetery. This cemetery is full of people of historical interest. Right here by the cemetery sign over here is a grave of Dick Stoker. So in doing my research, I found out that this monument here was installed in 1931. It's for Jacob Richard Stoker. He was a veteran of the Mexican War. He came to California in 1849 and Tuolumne County in 1850. And he built the original Mark Twain cabin on Jackass Hill near Tuttletown. His identity was partially lost when Twain used him as a character in Roughing It, Jay Bird and the Acorn and Burning Shame under the name of Dick Baker. He died in this county in 1898 and was buried here at this Masonic Cemetery. His identity was unknown for many years until Juliet Hood of Sonora traced out its history and outlined plans for an appropriate marking of his grave. The idea resulted in the start of the chain of Mark Twain Bret Hart markers throughout the Mother Road region. Look at that interesting green stone. Wonder if that's copper. I read somewhere that possibly he's not buried here, but they may have picked the right spot. It's right next to this road over here, Otis Road. So my eyes were drawn to this crypt made of brick. It's the grave of Otis Greenwood, who lived from 1829 to 1929. He actually died at the age of 99 though. And it's kind of creepy to know that right behind these holes is his coffin. He was the assistant editor for the Union Democrat newspaper in 1866, and he owned the beautiful U.S. Hotel in Sonora, located where the courthouse park is today. There's a grave of John McPherson. He was born on Prince Edwards Island, Canada. He died June 14, 1915. Because I live, ye shall also live. This is rather interesting here. Whoever was here was important. However, it looks like the, the names have been removed from it. Now, there we are. It looks like it's an 1861 grave of a Dr. Canton. But yeah, he got some special treatment here. So it looks like this cemetery here is a little neglected. I see uh, a lot of vases knocked over, and I see a lot of weeds here. A lot of weeds and a lot of brush here. It's not a very big cemetery. There's a circular driveway that services this area. But uh, let's go check out some more graves. Sonora is called the Queen of the Motherlode. Of course, gold was discovered in California in 1848. And the gold rush of 1849 resulted in a lot of people stampeding to this part of California. Here's a pretty cool grave here. 
sacred to the memory of Albert Newman Francisco, born in Cincinnati, Ohio, and he died in Sonora, March 1st, 1867. He was just 47 years old. This here looks like a printing press. I think I read that he was editor of the Sonora Union Democrats, so that would make sense. Look at this. This one's been knocked completely off of its pedestal. Mr. Walker. Now what's interesting about this cemetery is that there's a residence right up to it. These are very cool inscriptions here. Waterhouse, 1806 to 1877, died in Jamestown. Over there, W.H.H. H. Waterhouse, born in Maine, May 19th, 1843, and died in 1880. Cool fence around it. Something tells me that this is the older area. Oh my gosh, Benjamin Soulsby. I found Benjamin Soulsby right here. He is the founder of Soulsbyville. So Benjamin Soulsby lived from 1840 to 1930. And it's said that as a boy, when hunting a strayed family cow, that he found an outcropping of rich gold ore, which led to the discovery of the famous Soulsby mine and the founding of the town of Soulsbyville, which is also in Tolney County, not far from Sonora. It looks like his wife there is Jemima Soulsby, or possibly those are his children. There's also a Thomas Soulsby. This is kind of sad back here. This tree has knocked over this tombstone. Let's see if we can get in there and see what the name is on it. Let me come in the other way. Oh. There you go. Lucy Crabtree. She died in 1900. She was 64, gone but not forgotten. Wow, I'd say she's forgotten. That was the F. F. Mitchell, died in 1902, native of Bavaria. Henry Douglas, born in County Armagh, Armagh Ireland. We are proud and cold people. Wow, look at this one. Take a closer look at this one. Garbage truck rolling by. It's the grave of the Wolfings. There's a husband and two wives buried here. I actually mentioned on the same headstone. John Wolfing was the town butcher. He died March 12, 1883. He was only 59 years old. He was a native of Bavaria. Then we've got to come over here and show you his wife, Katharina, who died at age 31 in 1855, also from the same town of Bavaria, Germany. And over here, John's second wife, Bridget, who was a native of Ireland, she gave birth to their three children and sadly buried every one of them by the time she died at the age of 91 in June 1915. So on this side is Mary Wolfling Pickle. She died young at age 42 in 1905. And here we have their son Michael Wolfling who died at the age of 47 in April of 1907. May his soul rest in peace. And it's pretty cool that they have this elaborate carved marble headstone or tombstone for all four of them. Oh, this is one of the coolest ones in, I think in the cemetery. It's a mausoleum of James Bell, 1872. Right behind this door. James Bell. Look at these elaborate columns. That's pretty cool. James Bell was known as the flower man here in Tuolumne County back in the 1800s. I understand that he owned a flour mill on Millville Road. It was powered by some of the water that was running through 
Mills Creek, which was also a place where a lot of people were finding gold at that time. Here's a grave from 1852. Edward Robertson, 11 years old. Look at this structure here. The Wyckoffs, Elizabeth Wyckoff, born 1810 and died in 1873. She was 62 years old. Here's the grave of Victor Amy. He was born in Paris, France on the 9th of July, 1833 and he died in 1881. I understand that he lived in Hornitos in Mariposa County where he operated a hotel, a bakery, and a saloon. Right here are other natives of France, his family. If you'll notice, it says, I see repose, it is in French. This also is in French. As I've explained in a number of my videos, uh, there were a lot of immigrants that came to California in the aftermath of the gold rush. Here's another cool grave, uh, Edwin Alonzo Dunlop. He was born back in Maine. And he died in Columbia, 1877. This is the gravestone of George Carroll Bush, born in 1814 and died in 1890. I understand that he came to Sonora before 1860 and he spent about 30 years making saddles and harnesses in this town. And then came a fire. Sonora's commercial district was burned up on August 7, 1861. George's business was burned out. He lost about $2,500. He then rebuilt his shop on Washington Street near today's Courthouse Park. So I stopped here in the shade to tell you a little bit about some of the people who are buried here but who have no markers. The Sonora Herald newspaper reported that the first five individuals that were buried here in this cemetery were all homicide victims. Their names were Kittering, Sheriff Phoenix, a Mr. Heslip, Mr. Blakely, and Mr. Brunton. And I believe all of them were murdered in robberies that took place here in this area. Well, let me tell you a little bit about Sheriff William Phoenix. In 1854, he became Amador County's first sheriff, and he was only on the job for about a year. He was murdered trying to apprehend some of those who were responsible for the Rancheria massacre in Amador County in August of 1855. There were two fires that ravaged Dry Town during the 1850s, one of which was an arson fire set to destroy a section of that town. The fire was set in revenge of the killing of nine Americans in what was known as the Rancheria Massacre of August 5, 1855. It was reported that Phoenix chased some of the men all the way to Chinese Camp, which is close to Jamestown, California, where he was shot in the chest in a gun battle. He was brought back to the cemetery for burial. We don't know where his grave is. It hasn't been marked, or if it has been, the the marker has been taken away a long time ago. He was in poor health at the time of the hunt and that he was told to rest upon reaching Jackson, California earlier in the trip, but he refused to stop because he feared that his courage was going to be called into question and he was also concerned about what had taken place in Amador County, which he was responsible for maintaining law and order in. So right here is the Segerstrom plot. Looks like a number of family members who are buried here. I want to talk about this gentleman right here, Charles Homer Segerstrom. He died in 1946. He was a Republican delegate to the Republican National Convention from California in 1924. It was held in Cleveland, Ohio. That was the year that they nominated Calvin Coolidge for president. The interesting story about Segerstrom, he was a mine owner and he owned several hotels, including the Sonora Inn. When time came for a ceremony marking the completion of the Golden Gate Bridge in San Francisco, he offered the last rivet in fashion of gold that he mined. It was a symbolic gesture similar to the golden spike that completed the Transcontinental Railroad. So he handed the rivet to bridge engineer Joseph Strauss for an April 27, 1937 invitation only ceremony. But Strauss had trouble driving it into the hole. Later that golden rivet was removed and replaced with a steel rivet making the entire bridge complete. This whole hillside is covered in rock and I just wonder how difficult it might be to dig graves. They're still burying people here. Can you imagine digging graves back in the 1880s, 1860s, 1870s? 
probably by pick and shovel. I'm at this family grave plot for the Patterson family over here. There are graves, but the markers are long gone. Okay, wow. So I recognize this name and this font because Wells was a photo studio here in Sonora, and I've seen pictures with the same logo on it taken over 100 years ago. So Thomas Wells, the photographer of that studio, must be buried right here. He was born in Sonora in 1857. I believe that in the early 1870s he was studying photography in San Francisco, but in 1879 he bought the Sonora studio of a David Sewell. Uh, it was at the southeast corner of Washington and Dodge Streets. But look at these gigantic ants. I mean, they're huge. Huge ants. Look at that, geez. Even when they hit the ground, you can hear them. This is another grave that I wanted to find. Dr. Mark Dodge, he was born in New York. He died up here in 1866. He was 34 years old. He settled in Jamestown. He practiced medicine and he had some mining claims in that part of Tuolumne County. So he was expelled from the Masons for unmason-like conduct. Wouldn't it be cool to know kind of what that unmason-like conduct was? Rogers family plot. As you can see, what they did here is they stacked slate rock up there and then they, it's like they poured this concrete made to look like brick block or stone block around it. It's actually falling apart. Look at that, just completely crumbling. So I'm in the back section of the cemetery, which is probably the oldest part, and there's a simple little marker here of a Samuel Dick mentions that he is a pioneer and a martyr. Like he's buried underneath this concrete slab here. No doubt he is a pioneer of Tuolumne County. We're gonna have to find out exactly what he did. However, over here is Major R.R. R. Balls. He lived from 1804 to 1863. He served as the mayor of Sonora from March 1860 to March of 1862. He's buried with Masonic honors, looks like a recent plaque. Looks like the Sonora Fire Department number two honored him with this plaque. I hope it's purely coincidental that they buried Mr. Dick here next to Mr. Balls. Yeah. So we have to talk about this man right here. His name was Everyard Sherrick. He was born in 1826 and he died in 1913. I understand that he came out here to Tuolumne County in 1853, settling in Jamestown and his wife Sarah died of the measles in March of 1854 and he never married again, but he had a child by the name of George Sherrick. George Sherrick isn't buried here. He's buried over at the Oddfellow Cemetery here in Sonora. So George Sherrick was born in 1849 and he came out here to California at the age of four with his dad to Tuolumne County in 1854. Of course, he lost his mother. It's said that he was a miner up at Jackass Hill, which is not far from here. Do you remember the story of Jumping Frog in Calaveras County? That was the creation of Mark Twain. He knew Mark Twain. He also knew the Gillis brothers for whom uh, Mark Twain stayed in the cabin at Jackass Hill. Said that he knew him quite well. Mr. Sherrock was pretty active in politics up here in Tuolumne County. Ran for constable, basically was a sheriff, and he won. I have scoured this entire cemetery up and down and I have not found a marker for Edwin Matlock Hampton who lived from 1825 to 1880. He was a veteran of the Mexican-American War of 1849. I also could not find anywhere the burial spot of child prodigy violinist Morris Warner, who was buried here. He lived from 1893 to 1971. He was actually born in Kansas. He was a child prodigy at the violin, started playing at the age of five. And by the age of 12, he was playing in concert halls in London, St. Petersburg, and in Finland. I want to thank you for joining us on this episode of History Hunters. We explored the Sonora Masonic Cemetery and tried to pick out some of the more interesting historical figures that lived here in Tuolumne County, dating back to the 1850s. I want to thank you so much for joining us. We'd always appreciate a like, a comment, and always subscribe to our channel. We're History Hunters. We thank you so much.